Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at ya. For the past couple weeks now, I've been taking a look at the Unity Render Streaming Solution, which I have to say is a really awesome solution for being able to stream the game content from even the editor, for example, to a browser or any other type of device. And I think there are a wide range of applications there, specifically in the context of browsers that I'd love to see with CloudXR even. And this is all built off of the WebRTC standard, which Unity has been working on for several years at this point now. And I figured it would be probably a good idea to put a very short video together that explains what is WebRTC at a very high level, what are the kind of things and terminologies that you need to know. If you're taking a look at render streaming or just kind of generally looking at networking and wanting to get started with a WebRTC. Love to know down in the comments below if there are things that you'd be interested in leveraging WebRTC for. And if you do learn something from this video, make sure to leave a like because that really does help out the channel a ton. So what is WebRTC? In short, WebRTC stands for Web Real-Time Communication. And from a practical standpoint, it is a peer-to-peer -peer connection that you make between devices to share real-time video, real-time audio, or really just real-time data in general. The premise is you want to send some form of data peer-to-peer -peer, uh, and WebRTC defines the protocols and standards that you need it to really make that happen. And so the way it really works is typically there, it's not just a handshake and you magically know the IP addresses of both the devices and they start talking together. Typically there's actually a server that happens to be in the middle that both devices will end up connecting to and that server will then define the standards for how they should be communicating to each other. And this is done through a process called signaling. And once those kind of protocols for how the data should be transferred is communicated to both devices, they then need to go to a potentially secondary server that will allow them to connect over private networks. So specifically, this is called NAT, and you usually use something like a stun server to allow both of these devices through a middleman server to then find the direct path and ports to connect over so that they can start communicating with one another. In the WebRTC space, there's also a concept of a turn server, which is a just another way to basically say that instead of having that peer-to-peer -peer connection happen, you could have a proxy server that sits in the middle and you send the data over that proxy server to the device and back and forth. And together, a stun or a turn server falls under the broad category of ICE servers, which is, I believe, inter interactive connectivity establishment. There happen to be a lot of acronyms within the WebRTC space, but regardless, you mainly just need to know stun and turn. One of the cool things about stun is because it's a fairly lightweight server, there are actually a lot of publicly available stun servers for doing this peer-to-peer -peer connection traversal that are provided by a wide range of providers. So in the context of the render streaming example, for example, they use a publicly provided stun server by Google so that you can immediately get the samples up and running pretty quickly. And I think that's really, really awesome because it's, it's a pretty lightweight service, generally speaking. And for turn servers, there are a lot of open source solutions that are out there. So one of the things that Unity recommends is this co-turn server that is available on GitHub as well as on Docker Hub, which I think is really useful if you are trying to build this out into a Dockerized service. And that will act as that proxy for you and you can spin that up on Google Cloud. Uh, in regards to kind of the web server component that is also provided by Unity, which I think is really, really awesome. And that will go ahead and allow you to define those protocols for say, I want to send my keyboard and mouse input uh, over, over the, to the other device. I want to send video audio and how many video audio devices you want to need. It basically enables you to broker that communication over HTTP, web sockets, you name it. And I think that's, that's really, really kind of the versatility that WebRTC kind of comes under. Uh, in terms of setting this up, say, on, on the cloud, or if you really want to be super fancy with it and you have really low latency needs, you might consider putting this with edge computing as well. And 
All, all you need is because most of these servers tend to be open source anyway, deploy the server on whatever hosting service you want, and then open up a wide range of ports that are needed for that web server. And so typically this is run over UDP because of the real time connection. And so you want those packets to be sent without the handshaking that is required with TCP. And you just need a wide range of ports to, to typically to, to scale out the server because of the fact that it, you need a port per device. So yeah, I think that's kind of very high level what you would wanna know about WebRTC. Basically, it's this protocol, there are libraries in Unity, and you will need to set up your own web servers in order to handle that peer-to-peer -peer communication and handle kind of that initial setup before everything goes peer-to-peer. -peer. But other than that, that's really all I think you would need to know to at least get started with the render streaming stuff, which I think is really interesting, or more broadly, just kind of get started building out your web, own WebRTC application. That's it. I'll keep this pretty short. Thanks so much for watching. And then in our next video, we'll actually be taking a deeper look at the render streaming solution stack by Unity and seeing how we can actually put together a pretty interesting demo. So until then, this is Fuse Man, and I'm signing in.